The Indian diaspora is killing us. Okay, they are. <laughs> not they literally. Are. Not literally, but and it, it, maybe in a good way, but killing us in terms of competition. Okay, mm -hmm. people are um, traveling from India to all different countries all throughout the world, and they are more successful than the general population. That is true in uh, almost all of the countries that they're in. Yes. And it's certainly true here in the United States. It is. So I'm going to give you a couple examples. Um, put up the graphic. It's Indians versus general population in the United States. Just to give you an example of how much they're better uh, in terms of education and uh, uh, employment. So the Indian uh, diaspora in the U.S. is only 1%, except when it comes to graduate school population in the top universities in the United States, they make up 13% of the population. By the way, they're not even close to 1% of the population. They're less than 1%, and they have 13%. That's a giant number of the graduate students. In the United States, 67% of Indians have bachelor's degrees. Now compare that to 28% of the general population in the United States beating you with a whooping stick. The average household income for Indians is $90,000, whereas the average household income for the general population in the U.S. is $50,000. That is a giant, giant difference. What to do? You take them out of the office and hit them with a stick a couple times. They will do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, look, we're giving you those numbers, one, because they're true, and it's a news story. Uh, two, because it's not because the it, it, South Asians are a better race or anything like that. When you go to India, some of the numbers are disastrous. 40% of the population lives uh, uh, for $1.25 a day or less. Okay, And their life ex expectancy In Mumbai is 56 years old. It's disastrous. It's obviously not genetic. It's not a race thing. It's not any of that. It's that in the diaspora, uh, uh, in the Indian community, there is this work ethic, there's an expect expectation of going to school and doing, doing exceedingly well. Uh, and then what they have actually above even other Asians is uh, they're more willing to start their own businesses, right? More initiative, et cetera. It's a great combination. It's a great cultural combination that they have going, and that's why they have success. So what I'm saying is the rest of us should all learn from that, right? So we, if a culture does something right, that's awesome. We should, you know, adapt that and have everybody do it, right? So Asians should be more willing, other Asians should be more willing to start their own businesses, as an example, right? And certainly you should emphasize education more, which Indian communities do. And, and the list goes on and on. And you see the proof is in the pudding. 50,000 versus 90,000. As an average, they're nearly doubling the average. That's unbelievable. So... There's something to be learned there. And look, it goes to what I say all the time, which some people take to be controversial. Culture matters. And sometimes you have the wrong culture, sometimes you have the right culture. Doesn't mean overall, there's no such thing as this whole ethnicity has the wrong culture. But for example, give you an extreme example, in the cultures that say you should do female uh, circumcision. Well, that culture is wrong, right? in that specific instance, right? And when you say, hey, you know what, you should get a really good education, that culture is right. So let's learn from what we do wrong, let's learn from what we do right. And God bless, uh, you know, South Asians kicking ass all over the world.